Hello everyone, today I want to start working on the crafting system. So this is all the items I decided to have in this system. On the left we have all the items that require only one item type to craft them. And we have also stone which will be smelted to form cobblestone. And on the right we have all the items that require multiple item types. I decided to use this selector panel by pixels. So with this one we can just select one item and if we select another one the first item will be deselected and we can also reset everything just like this so then the idea is when we have selected one item we need to know which items we need to craft it and for that I want to have a system like this one so here we have nine rail lines because we can have at max 9 different items in crafting table and here we have all the ingredients so for example for a comparator you will need 3 redstone torches so for that you can add 3 observers then 1 quartz and then 3 stones So if for example we have selected the comparator, we will select this system and then we will first have one torch, second one and a third one, then the quartz and then the stone. So this way for every item we can easily tell which item we need and how many of each. So we'll need to have 14 different of the storage because we have 14 different items here. and. We also need more slot because we have more than 9 different crafting ingredients so for that we can just have another line on this side. So this is how the system will look like in the end and then we can just have multiple of them stuck on top of each other. So of course if you only need 3 items on this side and nothing here you don't need to have all those rail lines but for now I will keep everything like this. And then we can have an output at the back for example with trapdoors and some walls. So now with those walls we can easily have an output just with a trapdoor just like this and this will be instant for all the modules. So now we can have some observers for example here and if we trigger it at the top you can see the signal travel instantly. So this is almost complete now we'll just need to find a way to know which module to activate and then we need to activate each rail line after the other. So we will start at the output of the selector panel. Here I just want to have some observers here with some piston and the block. So here I will have a rail line. just like this and one will trigger for example this one I will have some observers and now all of these observers will trigger one after the other but only this one will send a signal to the rail because here we have a block and there we don't have a block but now, how do we know that the rail line have been activated by the first one and not the other one? Well, we can have a first signal here and then measure the time between the first and the second signal. So here the time will be shorter than if it was this one. The fastest that you can activate the rail line is every 4 game tick. So for example, if we have this observer activate, then 4 game tick later we will have this one game tick later on this one and so on. So 
if the interval between the two pulses is just 4 game tick, we know it, it was the first one. If it's 8, it was the second one, and so on. So now that we know how to send the signal, we also need to find a way how to receive it. So at the end we can have a system like this one. It will be activated by the first signal, and then 4 game tick later, the first block will be pushed down, and if we receive a signal, then we will have an output in the first one. So if we select the third item, we will send the second signal after 12 game tick. So here, when the first block is pushed down after 4 game tick, we won't have any signal. Same thing for the second one, and for the third one, then we'll have a signal in the third output. So this is a way to have different inputs and outputs, but only one line to send the signal. So now we will need to find a way to activate all these observers with 4 game tick of delay. So my first idea was to use repeaters, just like this. But this here doesn't work. So if I add blocks here, now we can see that the observer doesn't activate every 4 game tick. So if I tick freeze for example and do tick step every 2 game tick, we have an observer activating every 4 game tick and the rail line activating every 4 game tick. But we can see that the observer is not activating every 4 game tick but every 6 game tick. So if I do it again, we can see that first this ray line is activating, then the observer, but once it activates a second time, the observer doesn't activate right away. It waits a bit. So we can do it like this. And this is a bit weird because if I do it manually, if I activate those observers every 4 game tick, we can see that this observer here is activating every 4 game tick. So this here with the repeaters doesn't work, even though it's the same timing that what we've done manually, so I'm not sure why, but we can't use this system. So what we can do instead is to have some piston with an observer. So this way, with some repeaters at 2 tick of delay, we can have a signal every 4 game tick. So if we check everything with tick freeze, you can see that the ray line is only activated for 1 tick every 4 game tick. So we will use this system. And here we can clearly see, for example, if I enable the second one, we have two pulses. And if I enable this one, we also have two. But the time between those two is longer. So now for the receiving system, I will try to explain you how to do it in a horizontal way because it's simpler and then we will see how we can do it vertical. So first we will have the rail line and some observers. Then we will have some blocks at the back that will be pushed down every 4 game ticks. To push down those blocks we could just use some piston, just like this. with repeaters, as we did with the input system. And now with the timings added, we have a working system. So the first pulse will extend this piston and enable this system. It will also go through, but don't trigger anything. And the second pulse will retract this piston and then it will be decoded here. So now we can try it to see if it works. So if we have a block here on the third row 
and turn on the system. Here the cell light will turn on. We can also take a look at the system a bit slower. So as you can see the system turn on and then the second pulse will activate the second line. So really the benefits of the system is that you can have as many inputs and outputs as you want and just one line to connect both. And if you have a lot of inputs, you could also encode it in bits and decode it at the end. Now we will need to do the same thing as this, but for the vertical system. So we can have some piston. And some repeaters. So here we can have, for example, a block that will be retracted by a piston. Something like this. And then we'll have the same thing below and we will need to connect them with the 4 game tick interval. Just like this. And here we will need to have some observers to send the signal. And all those observers will need to trigger at the same time. Just like this with them. So for that we can't use a rail line but we can use some walls. And now we could trigger this wall with just a trapdoor. And we also need to have this side triggered with the correct timing. Okay, so I added the correct timing. And like the horizontal system, this detection system will trigger first on a rising edge. And then six getting later, this system will trigger. So we can test it. Here only the first will activate. If I change to the third one, only the third one will activate. So as you can see right now, it's working. We have a working system, we just need to make it uh, 14 layer tall, because we have 14 different items. And now the only thing left to do is to put the observers in place to know the exact recipe we need for each item. But we'll do that in the episode with the crafter. Because the order is actually important and it's not always the order of the crafting table. Another thing that I want to add here is a way to choose how many boxes of each item we want to craft. So for that I want to use a lectern and Using this lectern here, we can choose which signal strengths we have at the back, depending on the page. This time I already built the system because I think it will be easier to explain how it works. So here we can have a signal strength, depending on the page of the lectern. So for example we can have three. And when we enable the system here, when we flick this lever, this will turn on this big pulse extender and it will start with the signal strength that we have here. So the pulse extender will start with the signal strength of 3 and it will go down then to 2, 1 and 0. And every time it changes signal strength, this observer will detect it and send a signal. So here we need to have this smaller pulse extender to make sure that the signal goes through every one of those comparators and then we'll need to cut off the signal once the pulse extender has finished. So for example with a signal strength of 3, as soon 
as the pulse extender turned on, this block will be here and the signal will go through once. The line will trigger a second time when it goes down to 2, a third time when it goes down to 1, and then this block will be retracted before it goes down to 0. So we only have 3 pulses and not 4. And to make sure of that we have those 2 pistons which will retract instantly. So I will slow down the game and we can turn on the system. So first this pulse extender turn on and then the big one. We have a first signal then it takes some time and now we have a second signal so it takes 3 seconds or 60 game ticks to have another signal so here we have the third one and if we wait a bit then we will see this retract it so the last signal here didn't go through and then we just need to turn off the system once we have finished crafting mm -hmm. so this is pretty nice here we can craft a box every three seconds and we can't really go faster than 3 seconds because it takes already 56 game ticks to go between all those lines so here we have a clock of 60 which is pretty much the max but I think one box every 3 seconds is already fast enough and now there are just those items left and for those it will be simpler because I will just link each one of them to the item it needs so this way when I turn on the crafter I will have a box every 8 game tick which will be way faster than with this system. So it will be easier to decide how to do it when I will build the crafter. Ok so now we have a working system. So uh, I added this thing and made it bigger. So here I just have a rail line and some observers and doors so the signal can travel up. So here the lamps are just to easily tell which layer have been enabled and I also extended this for all the items. So we can test it, for example with the third one. Here we have only three. We can check, the third one is this one and it's working. It will turn on only three times. So we can try another one. So number 7 with 5. And it's also working. So in the next episode we will find a way to take a signal at the back here and then send all the signal to the different storage so we need to figure out how to have different storage depending on the items some of them I want to have more and some of them I also want to have item displays and maybe in the episode after we will work on the crafter, the different crafter for those items, those one and the pistons so if you have any question or any suggestion to improve this system, feel free to share them and I will see you in the next one. See you.